So here's how I survived computer science in college. A bit about me, I'm a CS student at the University of Toronto. I came in as a freshman in 2019 with almost no coding knowledge. Grinded hard through first year post, did an internship, took a gap semester to do another internship, did another internship, took another gap semester, and now here I am in my third academic and fourth actual year in school. In this video, I want to talk about some of the bigger topics that I've dealt with during my three years as an undergrad student at U of T. I'll share my experiences and thoughts on the same topics now as someone who's been through pretty much all of it. Now a quick note, these sit down videos aren't typically the types of videos that I make. I do a lot of travel vlogs. One, two, three, four. Hey. I love New York! Student content. Can you name the capital city of Canada? Well, it's not Vancouver. No, it's not. Is there a study spot that you would recommend to other students? I'd probably say tech life videos, big tech versus startups. What? I personally am liking more now, and there actually is an answer to this. So if any of that interests you, I'd recommend subscribing to the channel and checking some of that out. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Hi Jasper's viewers, it's Nathan, Jasper's roommate. If you're seeing this, hi Jasper, oh, you left your camera on the table, and for viewers, definitely go subscribe to Jasper. Have you seen his editing? Come on, like, his editing is making mine look bad. So definitely go subscribe and... Yeah. A question that a lot of high schoolers ask me is how much coding do you actually need to know before going into computer science? And the short answer to that is absolutely nothing. First year computer science courses are meant to teach beginners and the whole point of it is just to ramp you up on the basics. So as long as you have an interest in actually learning the material, I think you'll be perfectly fine. And if you do have prior coding experience, that's still great. It'll just help make your first year courses a lot easier for yourself. Personally, I did take an intro to coding class in my last year of high school, but I really can't say it helped me all that much for university. Most of the concepts that I learned in first year were still brand new to me, but trust me when I say that all of these courses are structured to help you pick it up, pick up all the concepts fairly well. And that's really all there is to this topic, but I'll leave with this. Remember that there will always be a portion of your class who is smarter than you or more knowledgeable than you. Don't be intimidated by that one guy who's been coding projects since he was 10, because mostly everyone else is going to be in the same boat as you. Everyone else is also learning for the first time. And on the note of first year classes, that leads me to the next section. Now in my first year, my freshman year. These were my courses. From my understanding, a few of these courses have been switched in the recent years, but the idea of the courses and what they teach are still the exact same. Now, CSC 108 and CSC 148 were the main coding classes uh, for first year students. The classes were taught in Python and were taught in a structure where you would have weekly homework assignments and frequent project assignments instead of having to excessively study by yourself. I honestly found these classes very manageable as long as you dedicated a set amount of time every week just to get your homework done. Other than that, pretty easy to stay on top of. Now CSE 165 was a mathematical proof course and one of the two most traumatic experiences of my life. Most of the classwork came in the form of weekly readings and frequent problem sets that would take several team members and several all-nighters just to finish. Whenever a piece that was posted, I knew I would have to start early, anywhere from a week to two weeks in advance, just for a chance at being able to finish it. And I think what made this class so difficult is just that it was so different from coding or math or any type of class that I was used to before. It's understanding and it's writing down logic in such a unique way. And unlike studying for a math test or a biology exam where the amount of effort you put into it is pretty proportional to how much you learn, how much information you cram in. You know, like some questions in a problem set can take one person 10 hours to do and another person 10 minutes to do just because the second person happened to think about it the correct way. Bottom line, this was not fun. Now Math 137 was the harder calculus class that was recommended for CS students in my cohort. It was the second most traumatic experience of my life. Now a lot of the course followed a similar proof structure with that previous CSE 165 class, 
And honestly, a lot of my complaints are similar, so I'm not gonna repeat and go into that. But just know that this calculus class is nothing like high school or even AP calculus. Even though I did AP Calculus, did relatively well in it, it did not prepare me for all the proofs and all the weird stuff I had to deal with in this class. So just make sure you're dedicating a good chunk of time if you are applying to take this course. And lastly, Math 223 was the Linear Algebra intro course that was offered at U of T. Now a lot of people are daunted by this whole idea of Linear Algebra, I know I definitely was, but I found this course a lot easier than the Calculus course at our school. I think it just comes from the fact that the learning format for this course closely resembled high school math a lot more than calculus. The teacher would teach you the lesson, they'd give you homework, you'd solve a few practice problems, and then eventually you'd figure out a pattern that you use to solve other similar problems. And compared to the last two courses I talked about, this course was amazing. And that brings me to second and third year. Now, in my second and third year, I took all of these main CS courses. There are a lot of them, so I'm just gonna quickly touch on some of the main ones. CSE 207, 209, and 309 were the main coding classes that I took in my second and third year, and they covered Java, C and software tools, and then front-end HTML, CSS, JavaScript, respectfully. Now, as someone who really enjoys writing code and not so much math, these courses were perfect for me, and there really were no out-of-the-ordinary commitments as long as you stayed on top of homework, stayed on top of assignments, and all that stuff. CSE 236 and 263 were even more proof-focused courses with the same problem set structure, same one to two week time commitment. Now 263 in particular taught data structures and algorithms, and that is really useful, especially when you're applying to jobs and things like that, but I still feel like it was unnecessarily hard. Not much you can do about it, but that's what it is. And lastly, CSE 369 and 373, these were the only mandatory third year courses and last year I had no choice but to take both at the same time in the same semester. And those two courses alone felt like an entire course load themselves. So if you have the option, I'd recommend spreading them out, different semesters, and you should be all good. After you get through your first three years of school, that's when you pretty much have all of your mandatory courses completed. Everything from CS, math, and stats. And since now you really just need credits to graduate, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of what courses you can choose. You don't even need to choose all CS courses. Now I've personally been trying out a lot of like front-end design, human-computer interaction courses. I also have a lot of friends who are trying out machine learning, AI. So there is a lot of flexibility to choose things that you're genuinely interested in. As long as U of T offers it, honestly the possibilities are pretty endless. And now that I'm at this sort of final stage of my undergrad degree, I really don't feel stressed in the courses that I take. I know that if I'm taking them, it probably means I have an interest in it. And looking back, it's kind of funny contrasting my lack of stress now and my extreme levels of stress in first year. A lot of that was because of post. Now I heard they got rid of post recently for computer science students at U of T, so I'll keep this section pretty brief. In short, post was absolutely dreadful. What is POST? In first year, CS students at U of T weren't truly in the program, so you would take all these courses in first year, and the school would look at students' final scores across two courses, CSE 148 and 165, and only accept the top percentage of students into the program starting from second year. For my cohort, you would have needed to get an average of roughly 88% to even be considered into the program, and to have officially passed POST. And for the students who didn't make it into post and didn't get accepted into CS, you would either need to transfer schools and try for CS somewhere else, you could stay at U of T and transfer to another degree, or you could repeat basically another year and try for post all over again. And clearly, like, none of those are great options. And it was because of that that first year, all of us students lived in so much stress, wondering if that next test would make us change our entire life's trajectory. I still remember the night before, a pretty big CSE 165 test. I was in a study well past midnight with some friends, and we were all just collectively having a breakdown. I remember calculating the exam score that I'd need to stay afloat in the class. I was spiraling on what I'd have to do if I didn't make that quota, if I didn't hit that target. Now, if you guys have any similar traumatic memories, let me know in the comments below. I think we'd all love to hear it. Thankfully, we got through it, and now I can share with you guys 
some tips on how I got through it and how I did relatively well in my classes. Look, I wasn't that student who went to office hours, I didn't go to every tutorial, you know, sometimes I'd have to miss one or two classes, but everything still worked out. I think everyone has a learning style that works for them, and you don't have to follow the one that teachers are always advertising to their class. Here's what worked for me in maintaining a 3.9 GPA. So the first thing that has helped me so much in every class is just having a group of classmates and a group of friends that I can consistently study with. Right from first year, I had a pretty great group of friends where we'd always ask each other questions if we needed to clarify any concepts, we'd prepare for exams together, and even give each other tips on assignments that we've been working on. I found that even if you have the same level of understanding as someone, or even if you're working with someone who you know more than in a certain topic, just by discussing each other's confusions and trying to help someone else out, it really solidifies your understanding. And for me, those 1am discussions where neither of us knew what was going on, those discussions were the ones that helped me start to understand the concepts, creating all those like aha moments. In my opinion, course group chats and these big Discord servers are great for large announcements, but they're not effective at all for personal academic success. I'd recommend reaching out to that one classmate you sit beside in class, or maybe reach out to the classmate that you got put together with for a project. Kind of build your own support network that way. Now, not everyone's gonna like this next one, but when you come to university, you need to learn to lower your expectations. If you're a top straight-A student in high school, chances are you're going to be scoring 60s or 70s in your first exams. Just understand that that is normal. Understand that the courses themselves are really hard. And instead of being down about that, use that energy into learning from your mistakes and trying to improve on them for the next test. Almost everyone's trajectory in school starts at the bottom and they all steadily climb up because they're able to do that. Perhaps my most important tip, make sure you have everything in a schedule. In college, there's so many deadlines for homeworks, assignments, tests, that professors will never remind you about. So it's really up to you to make sure you stay on top of them and you don't miss submitting anything or miss studying for anything. I've talked about this in a previous video, but personally I use Google Calendar. I slap everything into my Google Calendar from upcoming assignments to when my classes are and like what I'm doing for the day. And most importantly, I make sure that I'm checking that Google Calendar every single day to scout out what my next week's deadlines and activities are. A quick addition to this is to also keep a to-do list that's really helped me. I use Google Tasks, which shows up as this cute little sidebar with your Google Calendar. So right on one screen, you get to see both what you have for the day and what you need to do for the day. Highly recommend that. Next, start everything early. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, but as soon as you have note of a new homework or upcoming assignment, just do it. If it's easy, then you'll finish a week early and you'll have the entire week to yourself to do other things. And if it's difficult, then yeah, thank God you started early. What I like to do is start on everything pretty early and just scout out how difficult it's going to be. If I find out that it's not going to take me that many hours, then I'll deprioritize it and I'll push it back for a few days. But it's a lot better when you take that first look at it first so you aren't blindsided by it afterwards. And I'll end off this video with this one final tip, something that a lot of you guys need to hear. Get enough sleep. No matter how tempting it is to chug a Red Bull and grind throughout the night, no matter how much you want to flex to your friends that you only got two hours of sleep last night, it's not worth it. You'll have no energy for anything else and your body's going to be playing catch up for the next week. So really try not to force an all-nighter unless you absolutely have to. Go to bed at a normal time and attack the problem when you're well rested and you can actually think properly. And yeah. That wraps up what I want to talk about in my first ever sit down video. There were so many other topics that I want to squeeze into this video like the work life balance at U of T, student interview tips, internship experiences. But for time's sake, that'll have to be in another video. If there's anything that you guys want to hear, let me know. Don't be scared to drop it down in the comments below. Stay tuned for some upcoming vlogs and I'll see you guys soon. Ciao! You said always if I stay in your head every day